I'm just listening. I'm following the the documentary series that's being published on uh, on the channel Chertamen that uh, Bishop Vitus Holder has been given regarding his uh, his mission that the Vatican entrusted him with to have a conversation with the Society of St. Pius X from 2015 onwards. And he has, he has put together this incredible three-part documentary, which has ended today, uh, about the Society. I mean, he does make a very interesting call, a very interesting point. And I and I suppose I do find this this particular point very interesting. This demonic, demonic push to destroy the way we prayed before the council. Um, like as I said, in many of my clips, I don't hold, I don't worship a form of prayer or a a language. I don't worship that in and of itself, but. If that form of prayer, if that mass nourishes you, helps you live a life of grace, deepens your spiritual life, helps you form yourself in your family, you know, brings you into a rhythm of prayer because you can learn Latin very well. I did learn Latin. I find it a language very beautiful. And if that form of prayer nourishes you, helps you, supports you, does, like how can it be considered bad, evil or banned? Because today in this church, there is this demonic push to stamp out that the practices, the prayers, the piety, the way we lived the faith 60 years ago. And what we worshipped before the council wasn't all bad. Um, and we, today we see the church in its in the greatest confusion it's ever faced. You know, <laughs> we have bishops in Germany that don't know what, you know, what is the faith anymore? What what are they supposed to do? What are they supposed to preach? How are they supposed to lead? And um, you know, I think it's it's very very interesting. And Bishop Vitus he does make he does make a point. You know, why can't faithful have a chapel in a diocese where they can pray as their grandparents prayed you know what is what is going on in the church that we can't pray as our grandparents pray what why would the church take away a prayer that our grandparents would have prayed and practiced um you know they might not you know <laughs> Many generations gone by might have been very poor and illiterate and they mightn't have understood everything that was going on in the Mass, but they under, they did live the faith. They were profoundly, uh, you know, imbued in the faith. So I just find this debate very interesting. And, and we, we really do have, you know, he, he, Bishop Vitos is, is saying the same things that, that Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre was saying. And this debate is, is coming out into the church. Um, and I don't understand why the church is so blind to allowing this beautiful, these beautiful treasures to come out into the church. I mean, we we saw the Pope receive the Coptic Pope uh, from from Alexandria. And if you've ever been to a Coptic Orthodox divine service, you know, it's full of history. It's full of reverence and um, full of ancient meaning. It's I mean. You, it is, you know, the priest, the Coptic priest just didn't arrive there to perform a sort of service saying, and now we're here, we're gathered here on a Sunday and you're all welcome here and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it's like, look, we have to do a performance here at mass every Sunday to how are we going to, you know, make it more interesting, make it more engaging. And uh, it's like a roll credits at the end of the mass. And let's thank everybody and a round of applause for everybody. Okay, that's exactly what we get in a theater or in a performance or in a show. But our prayer and our, and our liturgy and our worship is far different than what the world has to offer. Um, I don't know, we'll see where it goes. But um, it's very, I find this documentary series, this three part, very interesting. It really does, um, really does make people think because, you know, when you experience, you know, I've experienced it, I've, you know, because I was involved in ecumenical 
meeting back in the 1990s I've been, I've, I, I'm very very interested in in liturgy and and I'm very interested in the different prayers of the church and um, when you experience the divine sacred in in, in these places and in, in, in it, it it changes you it changes you you know it, it has an impact on us and in, in Ireland today we have we have removed the 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 sacred you know and it's become banal it's become we've put the mass alongside a bingo session or <laughs> seriously you know seriously we've put it alongside all of these other things that we do in our lives and uh, you know people a lot of people go to mass they have faith but we're not nourishing this life of prayer we're not nourishing this encounter with the sacred um and the roman liturgy the the ancient Roman liturgy, which had so much in common with the Orthodox liturgies or the Armenian liturgies or the Coptic liturgies, all of these these ancient liturgies, they still speak to us today, and they still echo the prayer the previous generations held sacred is sacred to us too, and uh, the language that was nailed to the cross is sacred to us too today. Um, let's see what happens but um i think the church should let this renaissance happen should allow those of us who prefer that right access to it and it should be allowed to grow organically if people want it let them have it um you know and it might challenge priests as well if you took the time to learn latin right you know <laughs> i can tell you in some seminaries when i see what's going on in some seminaries Instead of t spending time on apps and God knows what, spend time learning the sacred. Um, well, yeah. <laughs> if, if some men are going into seminaries and spending time on apps, then they, they shouldn't be discerning that vocation. That's not for them. But if you're really looking for, you know, to, to be a man of God, learn the history of the church, learn the treasures of the church, learn the different languages of the church, not just Latin, you can learn uh, Greek, uh, Syriac, Take the time to to take up the challenge of of learning these uh, the 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 history and the practices and the, uh, of the church and to bring them into into this world so that people can encounter them. Anyway, just my thoughts on on this third episode of the Great Wound. Um, and big thanks to Church Tamman for publishing it. Um, but I do think I do think uh, you, we can't ignore this conversation. I mean. If bishops are having this conversation, us laity can be involved in it as well. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.